I wrote a book entitled Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. And the book basically says that questions unlocks the door to our success. That if you ask the right question, um, it's going to really allow you to find the right answer that's going to help you to be the person you really want to be. And there's a question that I have used for many, many years when I sit down with someone that is successful. And the question is, who do you know that I should know? In fact, I remember asking that question one day in Orlando, and a fellow by the name of Jeff said, well, I know John Wooden, and you ought to know him. And I said, well, can you help me know him? And, and literally, he opened the door for me to have, a, for many years, a mentoring relationship with that great man because I asked the question, who do you know that I should know? Well, if you would come and say, John, who do you know that I should know? then I would talk about my faith. I really would. In fact, I would like to talk to you about my relationship with God, my greatest friend. And I've often asked myself this question, why is it that many people don't know God? Because if they knew him like I know him, if they saw him like I see him, wow, I know that they would become a person of faith. I've concluded that Many people do not know God because they have a wrong picture of who he is and what he looks like. When people pick me up at an airport, if they don't know who I am, um, uh, sometimes they'll just put my name on a sign and you've seen the signs of the names and I come through security and look up at the end of somebody's arm and there's my name, John Maxwell, and I go meet him and he takes me to where I need to go. But, but I've often said the person that really is closest to my heart is the one who doesn't depend on a sign at the end of their hand to define me. They're a person that, that has a picture of me. Maybe it's a picture of me in, in, in one of my books. Hopefully it's one of my newer books. And, and as, as people are coming through security, they're looking at the picture and, and when they see me come through, they immediately I know who I am. They immediately can find me because they, they have a picture of me. I think a lot of people miss God because they have some wrong pictures of God. And I want to give you three pictures that I think a lot of people have that include God that just really keep them from knowing Him. Uh, the first picture in your mind is, I'd like for you to think of a fence, a, a big fence, a, a foreboding type of fence, okay? And um, you're on one side and God's on the other. And you know he's there, but he's a long way away. And, and this fence is a barrier. And, and basically, if you have this picture of God, you kind of frustratedly say, I know he's there. I, I believe in, in him, but I can't get to him. I, I can't get to God. And there are a lot of people who just have this picture that somehow God is not reachable, that they're on the outside and they're looking in and they're never going to get a meeting. And I just want you to know, if, if you have thought that of God in your life, that you, you think that there's a God, but you're away from him, and there's a fence, and it's an obstacle, and he's over there, and you're on the other side, and you can't get to If that's your picture of God, I'm your friend, and I want you to know it's a wrong picture of him. And here's why I know that. When God created Adam and Eve, and they sinned, as we all do, they did what we all do when we sin. They hid. They ran from God. And God came looking for them. In other words, God jumped the fence. Adam, Eve, where are you? Mankind didn't want to find God. God wanted to find mankind, and God will jump the fence for you. So if you feel that you can never get to him, don't worry about that. He'll get to you. The second wrong picture that people have of God is the picture of a ladder. The reason this picture is wrong is because we think we can get to God. In fact, we say, I can get to God. All I've got to do is get on this ladder of good works and every day do the right thing, be the right person, be the right kind of a neighbor, be the right kind of a parent. And, and we start rung by rung, working ourselves up this ladder, thinking that someday, somehow, somewhere, if we keep climbing and working hard, wow, being a 
good person that someday we'll get to God. I'm sorry, but it's a wrong picture. There is nothing you or I can do within ourselves to ever get to God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, It is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift. Why? So that no one can boast about it. You see, if I can work my way up to God through doing good things, I'm going to be hard to live with because I'm going to keep telling you how good I am and I'm outperforming you and I'm up, I'm up five steps higher than you. And God knew that we could never get to him on our own. In fact, that's why he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross. The only reason that Christ died for your sins and for mine is because there's nothing you or I could do about our condition. And so therefore, I'm never going to be able to work for my salvation. I'm never going to be able to climb the ladder and be good enough to see God. I cannot get to God by being a good person. It's not enough. The third picture that we have of God that's also wrong. Uh, this is kind of a little gross, but just stay with me, okay? Picture now a garbage can. Now, nobody ever takes a walk and says, boy, I hope I can see some garbage cans today. That's not, that's not something that's attractive to us. And when people think of God, often they think of their life and they see their life as a garbage can. In other words, all the stuff, the junk, the garbage within their life, all the sins, all the things that we don't want anybody to know. We don't even want to remember them ourselves. And when you think of that picture of a garbage can, usually we say something like this, God doesn't want to see me. God doesn't want to get to me. What's attractive about the garbage in my life? And I'm telling you, if that's how you see yourself, I'm not worthy of God's time or attention. I'm not attractive to God. I've done too much junk. It's a wrong picture of God, and let me tell you why. When Jesus, God's son, came to this earth, people ask him all the time why he hung around with sinners. He said, it's because I'm like a doctor. A doctor goes to sick people, not people who are well. I'm a doctor. I'm a spiritual doctor. In fact, I look for sick, sick people. In fact, he told the story of a shepherd who had 99 sheep in the fold. They were all taken care of. They were all doing well, but there was one that was not in the fold. There was one that was lost. And he said, I'll leave the 99 good people to go find the one bad person. Isn't it interesting, Jesus, when he came from heaven, his accusation against him was that he wasn't religious enough. And when all the rabbis were meeting at the Jerusalem Better Pastor Rabbi Center meeting, they said, where's Jesus? And Jesus wasn't there. He was down at the bar hanging with the hookers and, and, and with the bad people because he came to seek and save people that were lost. I love this verse. Brings a lot of comfort to me. It'll help you with the garbage can picture. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The past is forgotten and everything is new. I promise you, God has the ability to look beyond your past. You are attractive to him even with all of your junk. There's one more picture of God, and I love this because this is the true picture of God. This is the picture I want you to see of him. In your mind, think of a door, a door that can be open. And when you think of this door, God is on the outside and he's knocking and it's your door, it's your heart's door. And he's asking for you to open it because he wants to come in. You see, if you have this picture of God, it's the right picture because it says to you and me, God wants to get to me. He wants to come into my life. 
In fact, these are the words of Jesus. He said, I stand at the door, your heart door, my heart's door, and I knock. If you hear me call and open the door, he said, I will come in. He didn't say, I might come in. He didn't say, I probably will come in. He said, I will come in. Let me explain it this way. If God is a thousand steps from you, he will walk and take the first 999 steps. He only asks you and me to take one step. He takes all the rest. He knocks on our heart's door. All he asks of you and all he asks of me is that we open our heart and ask him to come in. And I can tell after giving you these four pictures of God, three wrong, one right, that many of you, as you listen to me, are saying, oh my, John, I want this God, this God who loves me unconditionally, this God who has the gift of forgiveness and salvation in my life. If you can sense right now that this is something you want, I want you just to close your eyes and pray with me right now. In your heart, pray these words. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me so much that you would die on the cross for me. And today, I know you are knocking at my heart's door and asking to come into my life. And so I open my heart's door. I ask you to come in and live with me, to forgive me my sins, to be my savior and my friend. And from this day forward, I'm gonna live with you I'm going to love you. I'm going to follow you. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me of every sin and making me a new person in Christ. Amen. My friend, when I prayed that prayer a moment ago, if you pray that prayer in your heart, would you do me a favor after uh, this session is over? Go to the leader of your group and just share with them that you made a decision to be a Christ follower. I can promise you, of all the things you do in life that will give you success, this will not only give you success today, it will give you eternal significance and success in your life. Welcome, my friend, to the family of God. Thanks for allowing me to share the four pictures of God with you. Within the next 24 hours, our team will reach out to you. And if you respond that you prayed the prayer to receive Christ, I hope and believe that you did, then they're going to again share with you how you can have some free resources that will help you to grow in your faith journey, a study guide and, and then a, another surprise for you. So I'm so pleased that I had this time to share with you the most important message you could ever receive how to have a relationship with God. Thanks for listening, and now may God bless you on your spiritual journey. We will walk beside you and put resources in your hand.